Hey there, future engineers. Welcome to another exciting journey into the world of geotechnical engineering. Today I'm diving into a fundamental topic in geotechnical engineering, the different types of soil. Understanding the various soil types is essential for any construction project as the soil forms the foundation upon which everything is built. Understanding soil types is crucial for any construction project, so let's get started. The properties of soil can significantly impact the stability and durability of structures, making it vital to know what you're working with. First up, we have gravel. Gravel is made up of coarse particles and has high permeability, meaning water can flow through it easily. This characteristic makes gravel an excellent choice for drainage applications, as it allows water to pass through without causing waterlogging. This makes gravel excellent for drainage applications. You'll often see it used in drainage systems, retaining walls, and as a base material for roads and pathways. However, its stability can be a bit tricky for building foundations. Gravel can shift and settle over time, which might not provide the most stable base for heavy structures. Next, we have sand. Sand particles are smaller than gravel, but larger than silt. This intermediate size gives sand a unique set of properties that are highly valued in construction. It's also quite permeable, but not as much as gravel. Sand allows water to pass through, but it retains some moisture, which can be beneficial in certain applications. Sand is often used in construction for its good load-bearing properties. It provides a stable base for foundations and is commonly used in concrete mixtures. It's important to remember, though, that sand can shift under heavy loads. This shifting can lead to settling issues, so it's crucial to compact sand properly before building on it. Now let's talk about silt. Silt particles are much finer and can retain water longer. This fine texture allows silt to hold on to moisture, which can be both an advantage and a disadvantage. This can lead to poor drainage, which is something you have to consider in your designs. Poor drainage can cause waterlogging and weaken the soil structure, making it less stable. Silt is less stable than sand and gravel, so it's not the best for supporting heavy structures. It can compress under load, leading to potential settlement issues. Moving on to clay. Clay has the smallest particles and can hold water extremely well. This high water retention makes clay very cohesive, but it also means it has very low permeability. This leads to very low permeability. Water moves through clay very slowly, which can cause drainage problems and lead to waterlogged conditions. The interesting thing about clay is its plasticity. It can be molded when wet, but it becomes very hard when dry. This property makes clay useful for creating barriers and liners, but it also means it can crack and shrink when it dries out. This makes it useful in certain applications, but it can also expand and contract with moisture changes causing foundation issues. These changes can lead to significant structural problems if not properly managed. Then we have peat. Peat is an organic soil composed mainly of decomposed plant material. This organic composition gives peat a high water retention capacity and makes it very compressible. It's highly compressible and holds a lot of water, making it unsuitable for supporting structures. The high compressibility means that peat can settle significantly under load, leading to instability. However, it's great for agricultural use due to its high nutrient content. Peat is often used to improve soil fertility and structure in gardening and farming. Lastly, let's touch on loam. Loam is a mixture of sand, silt and clay, often considered the ideal soil for many applications. This balanced composition gives loam a good mix of drainage and moisture retention properties. It has good drainage, yet retains enough moisture for plants, making it excellent for gardening and landscaping. Loam provides a fertile environment for plant roots to grow and thrive. In construction, its balanced properties provide decent stability and load-bearing capacity. Loam is often used in landscaping and as a topsoil for lawns and gardens. So, there you have it, the main types of soil you'll encounter in geotechnical engineering. Each type has its unique properties and uses, and understanding these differences is key to successful project planning and execution. Each type has its properties and uses, so understanding them will help you make informed decisions in your projects. Whether you're working on a small residential project or a large infrastructure development, knowing your soil is crucial. Before you go, if you found this video helpful, like, comment and subscribe to see more content. Your support helps us create more educational videos for aspiring engineers like you. Thanks for watching and remember to keep exploring the world of engineering.
There's always something new to learn and discover in this fascinating field. Stay tuned for more insights and tips. See you next time. Keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible and stay curious.